Okay. All right. Well, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Leanna. I am the chair of the Wikipedia and Education User Group. Um, I have Zico and Philip here, our fellow board members, um, along with me. And uh, we host these open meetings periodically throughout the year to showcase educational work being done um, by incredible people in our uh, movement uh, around the world. Um, so maybe we can do uh, a couple of short introductions for um, those of you who are here. So um, I will start, I, as I said, I'm Leanna, I am from the United States and I work for the Wiki Education Foundation, which we are the organization that runs the education program in the United States and Canada. Okay, um, let's do introductions. Does someone want to jump in or should I uh, call people out by name here? I think we have a small <laughs> group. People can just jump in. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Rocio. I'm from Chile. Uh, and I work as a head of education and digital literacy here in, here in Chile. Great, okay, thanks Rocio. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Zafer, I'm from the, uh, Wikimedia Turkey, I'm member of the board member of the, the Wikimedia Turkey, and uh, we are also making this, some education uh, program in Turkey also, uh, nice to meet you everyone. Thanks Zafer, thank you for joining us. Maxwell? All right. Good evening, everyone. So um, morning, afternoon, depending on, on where you are. So my name is Maxo Biganim. Uh, I'm with the Open Foundation West Africa affiliate group in Ghana. And I'm an open advocate, I'm an educator, and also um, uh, an associate coach and a trainer. So that's basically what I do. And I'm very passionate about education. Great, thank you. Okay, Melissa? Hello everyone, I'm Melissa. I'm part of the education team at the Wikimedia Foundation and I'm super excited to hear Maxwell and Rocio today. Okay, and then the, my fellow board members, uh, Zico, can you speak or is this, you wanna just say something in the chat? Hello, I hope that uh, you can understand me with all this noise here. So I'm Zico van Dijk, I'm very happy here. I'm. Uh, the secretary of the EduWiki user group. And uh, yes, I'm interested in all kinds of, in all levels of education, trainings and workshops, and now especially about primary education, because uh, I'm the co-founder of a Wiki encyclopedia for children. And uh, I'm on the path, I'm taking ideas from the left and the right. And I am very curious what uh, I am going to hear tonight. So hello from me. Welcome. Thank you, Zico. Philip? Hi, everyone. I'm Philip from Wikimedia Serbia, also from the board of the Wikipedia Education User Group. Um, I'm here in uh, hot Belgrade. We have 40 degrees Celsius here today, so it's like the hottest day in the year so far. Uh, but anyway, um, I've been involved with education work uh, in, in Wikipedia contexts for um, I don't know, 17 years, maybe. Um, yeah, a, a long time. But um, but yeah, I'm uh, mostly doing stuff uh, in Media Serbia uh, related to uh, seminars of, for professional development. So basically, elementary and high school teachers, um, we, we teach them how to teach Wikipedia uh, in classrooms. So that's one of our uh, cornerstone projects. Hey, thanks, Philip. And definitely uh, hope you can turn a fan on or otherwise stay cool. <laughs> so, wow. Hi, everyone. So uh, nice to be here. Nice to see you. This is Joao speaking from Sao Paulo, Brazil. And I'm uh, also a member of the board of the Wikipedia Education User Group. I'm currently the membership administrator of the user group also. Uh, where the head of chair of Wiki Movement Brazil, which is the Brazilian affiliate of the Wikimedia movement. It's my pleasure to be here. I will keep my camera off as I'm actually having lunch 
as I'm attending the conference. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Joao. And it looks like Jackie is just joining us now. Um, Jackie, I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot here. We just finished with introductions seconds as you as, before you joined there. Um, if you want to say hello and where you're from. So thank you. I'm just so glad that I made it and uh, so happy to be here with you. I was so interested in the in both the presentations today. I'm Jackie Busio from Mexico City and Wikimedia Mexico is uh, it's my tribe. <laughs> so glad to be here. Okay, thank you everyone. Um, so the agenda for the meeting today, I will give kind of a short overview of what we have going on in the user group. Um, but most of the time will be devoted to our two guest speakers, Maxwell and Rocio. And I know we're all really excited to hear about their, uh, their work. And so I don't wanna to spend too much time talking uh, myself, but a, a couple of brief updates um, from our user group. So um, you may have seen on, our, um, on the education lists, we are currently, uh, running a mentorship pilot. So one of the things that we have wanted to do as a user group for a long time is be able to provide mentorship between program leaders around the world. And so um, we have a Google form that we are encouraging people to fill out between um, now and June 30th. So we will start doing the matching on June 30th if you have not already filled out the form. Um, I have pasted a link to it in the chat that there. Um, and you can volunteer to be either a mentor or a mentee or both. Um, there may be some things that you have ideas about um, that you want to, uh, that, that, that you think you could mentor someone else on, but there also may be things that you still would like to be mentored on yourself. And so you don't need to be one or the other, you can volunteer to be both. Um, so if you are interested, I would encourage you to fill out the form. Um, we're asking for uh, information about how frequently you are interested in being contacted and um, what kinds of topics related to um, Wikipedia and education you are interested in either mentoring or being mentored on. And so we're hoping to be able to do some matching with that after um, we get all the submissions. So um, a general plug to, if you haven't already, please fill out the mentorship form if you are interested in participating in this pilot. And depending on how the mentorship goes um, and whether it seems to be a success, we um, hope it will be, and we hope we can take the learnings we get from this and expand it out into a larger project next year. Um, another general update, um, as you may have remembered, our user group was hoping to host a um, EduWiki conference, um, an international conference in person, which we had scheduled for 2020. Um, obviously the pandemic happened and all international conferences stopped um, and continue to be stopped. So um, we are still in a holding pattern for that, but I think um, we have hopes that as, you know, the pandemic slowly uh, starts to, uh, to, to, to wane down, hopefully, uh, that we might be able to host that in the future. Um, so stay tuned. It's something that is still on our radar. And as soon as the public health situation globally resolves to the point where it can be safe for us to gather in person again, that is something that we are very interested in doing still. Um, I think Otherwise, uh, the user group board continues to uh, touch base on things. Uh, Wikimania is obviously coming up. The submission deadline was uh, last week. Hopefully, several of you submitted uh, Wikimania talks. I know our user group did as one as well, um, and we're always looking for uh, good opportunities to uh, to share what's going on in the education space globally. Um, so even if you didn't submit a talk yourself, I would definitely encourage you to uh, to show up uh, for those sessions, which will all be virtual this year. So it should be a, an interesting opportunity to uh, learn from uh, from from lots of different people. Um, 
while I have been giving this update, it looks like we had a number of folks join. Um, for the interest, in the interests of time here, those of you who, um, who haven't already given an introduction, if you feel like uh, putting your name and where you're from in the chat um, to let everyone know who is here and we can say welcome in the chat, um, that would be great. Are there any questions or from my fellow board members, is there anything I missed in that update that we should be sure to share? Okay, hearing nothing, I think let's get started with our first presentation. Okay, and welcome to all of the, the new participants here. Um, Maxwell, do you wanna, do I need to give you screen sharing permission or can you do it? I think it's, it's done. Okay, great. I'm going to turn the view to you. All right. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so thank you very much for um, joining the call. Am I still on video or my video is off? Your video is off. Okay, sure. So let me just uh, do, do the PowerPoint presentation now. Okay, so um, thank you very much for joining. My name is Maxwell Biganim, um, training associate at the Open Foundation West Africa, which is um, an affiliate to the Media Foundation. Um, it's going to be quite an interesting presentation because I am really going to have a conversation with you. It's not really going to be the normal presentations that we have. So um, basically, I am going to talk about um, KWIX, which is an online um, platform, so to speak, that enables uh, people to access Wikipedia and other educational con uh, content um, offline. So basically that's what I am going to talk about. So if you see KWIX, this is the logo of KWIX and we go on. So um, before I zoom in to tell my story, this is what I identified. So the problem statement, and this is contextual, this looks um, at the situation in Ghana. So. Um, based on the data available and then information available, you realize that there is this um, digital divide. There is that gap when it comes to um, uh, digital infrastructure and anything that has to do with um, digital literacy. And you also realize that there is gender um, exclusion where um, uh, females, so to speak, or women are kind of excluded in a lot of um, things that happens around, especially when it comes to digital literacy, information literacy, et cetera, et cetera. And also one of the problems in our context was um, the rural versus urban, like that kind of gap where those in the rural communities are disadvantaged as compared to those in the urban um, uh, cities or in the urban enclave. So what really happens is you realize that those in the urban cities have access to internet, may have access to digital divide, um, sorry, um, may have access to information, may have access to, it may not be reliable, but as comparatively, you realize that they are more advantage, advantageous when it comes to um, digital literacy or information literacy. Now, looking at this three, I mean, the problems are a lot, but looking at this three, it the, the, the onus lies on us as a community, the onus lies on us as individuals to help bridge this gap. We may not be able to solve all the problems, but at least a step in the right direction or a win for one is a win for all. So this is really the problem that as an educator, I, 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 I got to understand and knowing the gravitas of the situation, something had to be done. Now, if you look at the internet usage, over 422, 428 billion investment is needed to connect all humanity to internet by 2030, according to the uh, World Wide Foundation. This is a data that they published. Now, the question then comes in as uh, looking at a country like Ghana or country that I would say we are in the uh, category of developing nations. 
do we have to wait to receive all this investment before our people get access to internet? Access to internet virtually means access to information. Now, if you look at one of the problems that we have also, it talks about access to information. There is this cost, there is infrastructure and a whole lot. So I realized that the KWEX would solve the problem of information access because um, UNESCO in 2015 um, declared or made a charter on the universal access to information that it, it is a must. Now, if you talk about that policy or if you are looking at that policy, you realize that that policy may not translate in the local context or in the rural communities in Ghana. So then that is where we keep media or um, KWIX comes in to be able to give people access to information without even the usage of internet. So that when the internet comes, it becomes an add on, but yet still they are going to have, people are going to have access to information for whatever they want to use it for. So this is my quick outline that we will go through. So what is KWIX? As I said, it is a free software that brings knowledge to millions around the world, even in remote places. And this may be schools, countryside, and then traveling, and then uh, you being able to access information without the use of um, internet. So that is basically what KWIX is. Now, KWIX also offers Wikipedia, Wikishnary, Project Gutenberg, TED Talks, FET, and even, you, even uh, uh, an add-on as um, FET simulations. So these are some of the stuff that it, it, it can offer. And when I'm ending the slide, I'll leave it up for us to look at ways that we can all help in, in um, propagating this whole KWEX project. So uh, the whole KWEX project also affords us uh, access to information on censored context, uh, more resources for students, for, for students to be able to learn, get information that on a normal day, they are not going to get the information. Now, dig digital literacy is very important in KWIX because the KWIX project that we are running do not only give students the, the reader and the content, but then there are sessions or working sessions that we organize for students to take them through what digital literacy is. We expose them to the internet. We um, collect data, we interact with them to let them know that there is an, a world there that they can access information and we teach them how to even access information. It will surprise you to know that when we went to or when I visited most of the schools with um, um, my community, that's Open Foundation West Africa, you realize that most of the students do not have information about what Wikipedia is. And there is a data, there is a data that we have that uh, indicated that most of them are using internet for things that are not educa ed um, educative, all because they haven't been taught how to navigate through the digital space. And that is what KWIS then offers. So the tool has a reader and then a content. So this is where my story comes in. It's going to be a, a quick one. So um, I was introduced to KWIX by uh, Felix Nate um, in Ghana some years back when he held a session. And as an educator, immediately he trained me or he trained us on KWIX. I felt that this was what Ghana needed. This was what we could do to bridge the gap before we connect to the internet. So those who are disadvantaged can have access to information and I, 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 I personally took it as something that I can do to also help my community. Again, Felix is the same person who first introduced KWIX in Ghana, who trained about 300 to 400 students in the north. That is remote part of um, Ghana. There is, uh, and they are more, I would say, the schools that he visited didn't have access to even computers and all that, but he did his best to introduce them to it. And I was inspired by his story. I was inspired by what I read and I decided to take on the challenge. So um, we visited, the first school that we visited was a senior high school. And uh, that is where we started engaging uh, the students to get the whole picture of their level of um, digital literacy and realized that their, their, their uh, levels of digital literacy was very low. So we had to interact with them and uh, one of the surveys that 
it was it was we got less than three people or four out of about 40 acknowledged that they know about Wikipedia, which wasn't right because at that age, comparatively with other countries, we realized that people know about Wikipedia, people know about the internet. So then the onus lies on us as educators, the onus lies on us as change agents to actually use a platform like Kiwix to be able to introduce them to a world where there are possibilities, there are opportunities. So that is how the whole um, thing started. So I visited uh, some senior high schools with um, other volunteers who saw the vision. And I must acknowledge Open Foundation West Africa for um, their support when it comes to Kiwix, putting in more efforts, helping us, the challenges and all that came, they were like, they, they really stood by us as a community to make sure this was executed. And after the first school, we realized that the, the, the response was getting better. The teachers were excited about such a platform because they were com complaining about books. And also most of the schools that we visited had ICT centers with just the computers. So the computers were just the students come in, they just switch on and then some few applications that are not very educative. But when we introduced the Kiwix to them, they really embraced it because they realized that yes, this is a time that students can really come and access information. They can do independent research. They can learn to do independent research. So from there, we started gaining the traction and we, uh, so the first school was um, a mixed school. And the second school was, when I say mixed school, it was based uh, both uh, males and then females. Then the second school that we did was also um, 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 males and females. Then the third school that we decided to visit was uh, solely girls school because we realized that there was a gender gap based on the two um, schools that we visited. We realized that the females were more excluded when it comes to digital literacy. And then we decided to train them and then train them as peer educators so that they can also go out there and reach out. Now the rationale behind this is one, we are getting to teach them digital literacy we are introducing them to Wikipedia, of which majority of the students were very excited to know that it was individuals and volunteers who were putting the information out there. So I think that is a way that as a community, we can leverage on it to advocate for inclusiveness when it comes to um, information access and information curation. So basically after the three sessions that we did, um, most of the community members also decided to take up the, the project. And I'm so amazed at the, the, the work that the community is doing with KWIX, the number of schools. In fact, I started with the senior high schools, but the community has now expanded it to the basic seniors, basic, uh, basic and the junior high schools. And then they are accepting it. Every now and then there are calls coming in. People have accepted the whole idea of KWIX. So that is what my KWIX story is. And I think this is something that has to be, to be global. Every country, everywhere that are, they are having challenges or they are having challenge when it comes to information access, Wikipedia can give them an alternative, which is KWIX. And I think that is the way forward for us as a group. Uh, we should be able to look at how we can add on, how we can research about it. We can look at how to create content for senior high schools, basically um, work with the national curriculum developers so that all the curriculum that it's in books can be uploaded on um, uh, KWIX. So that is basically the story. So the next chapter, I end with the next chapter. What are we doing? How are we going to be challenged to move KWIX to other countries, not even in Ghana, but the remotest countries, places that are struggling to have access to information. What is Wikipedia doing? What is the movement doing? As a user group, what, are, what, what impact do we want to create? Do we, do we have to wait till the whole world is connected to the internet? No, we have an alternative. We have done it before as a user group. We have done it before as a community and we can do it one step at a time. There is a saying that I'm going to end with um, I'm ending the presentation with they said that a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single 
significant step. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let me switch our view here to the gallery. Does anyone have any questions? I can I can ask one. I, I, how how can we uh, how can others in the movement help support your work? Okay, so very good. Um, to support the work, I think that uh, one one of the things that we can look at is to uh, get uh, content content. We can all come together and then get a content that would suit the local context. So if there is someone in Brazil, for example, and then identifies community where maybe they have um, laptops, they have this, but then they don't have access to internet. We can adapt and adopt the project elsewhere so that it becomes like um, a web of impact. That is what I'm looking at. And I'm also looking at the way that um, as, 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 as community members in Ghana, people can also share in the vision and in their local areas, in their places, if they want to do works, they just, we have a, um, a, a community hour line. We can train people, we can train um, senior high school students, we can train virtually everybody, even the adults and all to understand KWIX. At the end of the day, if we project KWIX, if we project our movement, our impact will be felt, our impact will be held. And that is when we get a lot of edtechs, educational technology companies would even be brainstorming on how to provide free um, um, information and even books. For example, if there are teachers, for, I'm a biology teacher. So if there is a biology teacher, let's say in, um, the US and he uh, wants to get access to, let's say, um, help me develop my content for my class to put it online, it becomes easier. So it goes like, oh, Max, let's develop this course. Let's put it out there, let's develop. So that it becomes, um, I, I can be in Ghana and at the same time have access to um, um, a content, maybe in Brazil, look at what they are studying, do a comparative study, at least have a global perspective when it comes to topic, but not forgetting the local context, what really matters in the local context. So I think that is how, as a community, we can help. We can start making noise about it, look at ways to develop it, get volunteers to um, um, have the same vision, and then we share our story to the world. Great. Melissa, it looks like you have a hand up. Yes, thank you. Uh, such a pleasure to hear you, Maxwell. Thank you so much for sharing. Something that I am always uh, curious to learn about is what are some of the best practices or some of the recommendations that you could give to other volunteers as to how to establish this partnership with the education institutions. I think that's something that a lot of our volunteers struggle with, uh, you know, like showing the value of Wikipedia and the Wikimedia projects to education, to actors in the education sector that maybe either don't know anything about Wikipedia or have some prejudices against it. So what, what are some of the things that you have tried to make that partnership happen? Okay, so um, first and foremost, uh, when I got to understand this whole KWIX project that I personalized it, I decided that it was expedient for me to first go to my alma mater, which is a school that I just left. So it made sense for me to go to the school with, um, there is one volunteer friend of mine, Otue Champon, he's also from the same school. So we just decided, hey, if we are going to start anything, let's first go home. So we went there because they are familiar with us. They know where and how we can work. So we went there, we spoke to the headmaster. He said, no, the school is yours. Feel free, do it. Come on, just feel free. So that was it. When we started it, we did it. And the teachers was, were so accommodated, they realized, oh, so we don't have access to this information. So remember the teachers also have a network. So they started talking to their fellow teachers. There is this platform, these guys are doing good. I think you would need it. And we started getting calls. So based on that, there were recommendations because they could see the effect of what we are doing. And the community as, as, as a whole was also doing their best to put the information out there. And one of the things that also helps is to understand your context. So if you are presenting KWIX, KWIX should solve a problem. So you should identify your problem statement, which is very key. So that when you are approaching the school, you tell them, hey, you are not connected to the internet and you are disadvantaging people from having information. However, do you know you can equally have access to 
information on the internet without using internet, they go like, how is that possible? Then you are going to use that as a leeway to get them. Okay, then there is this thing that I, I want us to look at. You demonstrate it to them, you show it to them, they'll go like, oh, okay, then I think my students can have. You go like, oh, have you listened to TED video? Oh, what is TED? Okay, let me show you one TED video. They'll listen, oh, my students will love this. So it's, it's not um, like, uh, let me say, it depends on your context. Brainstorm about it, come up with possible ways and touch points, entry points. So the entry point should be there, but first you have to understand some of this data that I gave, the accessibility, the money to connect to the whole world. Once you tell people the problem statement, irrespective of how proud they are, they begin to come down and go like, okay, let's try and see if it will work. And then we can leverage on teachers are very important when it comes to KWIX, because if they begin to understand, that is how can they communicate to other volunteers and other teachers, and then your work will be amazing. So these are some of the ways of entry points. Thank you, Maxwell. That's really powerful. Yeah, that was that was super helpful. Um, I, I see a question from Zico in the chat here. Are there pictures in Kiwix nowadays? Oh yeah, yeah, there are pictures. Uh, is that question referring to the pictures of the project that we did, or generally? I, I, I really. But if it's pictures, we have pictures of Kiwix. It's on Open Foundation yeah. West Africa our platform. Yeah. Okay. I think he wants to ask. Oh, I, I meant, um, I believe there are no pictures in the article on Kivik because they are too big, at least it was like that uh, 10 years ago. So, um, I mean, the articles are without pictures still. Do the articles have pictures in them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of the articles have pictures. Some, yeah, they have pictures. And even some also have um, diagrams, for example. Uh, some of the... Uh, I am science inclined. So when we went, uh, some of the content were, okay, so I didn't even talk about that. So some of the content were made, science, um, um, biology, physics, chemistry, mathematics. So if you go on the biology and you load it, you realize that the biological diagrams are there, the biological pictures, uh, geography, stratosphere, and all those diagrams are there. Yes, so you can, you can, you can have those pictures in there, yeah. But because the, the whole Wikipedia is very big, you can decide to curate it. So if there's, there can be topical issues. So history, you can get Kiwix on history, Kiwix on fixes, Arabic and all that. So it's just one-on-one, -on -one. they are in layers. And then you can also have a mini uh, abridged version of the whole Wikipedia, which is about 20 gig. Great. This has been super interesting for me, hopefully for others as well. Is there any other questions for Maxwell? Okay, hearing then, I'll say thank you again to Maxwell for a great presentation. Um, and <laughs> we got some applause. And, uh, and I will turn it over to Rocio, who's going to talk about her work with Wikimedia Chile. Thank you. Uh, I will share my presentation. Let me check. Okay. There. We can see it. Yeah, great, thank you. Uh, well, um, today I'm going to share some experiences related to Wikipedia in the classroom, Tools for Critical Citizenship, which is the name of our training teacher course that we developed on April, 2021. But first, uh, I would like to introduce a little bit about uh, our education and digital literacy program. Uh, we started on uh, 2, 2018, but at the beginning, we were mainly focused on uh, content creation activities with uh, universities. Uh, we worked into uh, the creation of articles uh, for Wikipedia. And we lay aside uh, school communities. And the reason was that 
Uh, here in Chile, we have a big, big uh, digital gap. So uh, the majority of, uh, of the school don't have the, uh, they don't have the conditions to, um, for example, edit in uh, or, or make uh, edit activities in Wikipedia because they don't have uh, internet connection or uh, they don't even have um, digital devices. So we started uh, with universities, but soon after we began to uh, wonder how could we uh, how could we link with the school communities and uh, how could we increase our impact into education. So uh, at that moment, we realized that Wikipedia can be used uh, not only as an uh, uh, edition or, or, or I don't know if you say edition or a writing tool, but as a um, tool for teach uh, some uh, literacy skills. So uh, we try to incor incorporate the Wikimedia philosophy, like the open knowledge and free culture, in order to promote uh, digital literacy and uh, critical citizenship with school communities. So um, now we are working into three different projects. Uh, we have uh, Wikipedia in the university, Wikipedia, uh, in school and those uh, training teacher course. So uh, our context, mm, I don't know, well, uh, if you don't know, but here in Chile, uh, school closures and the forces switch to virtual modalities have led to a series of issues for the educational communities such as uh, digital gap, as I said, uh, work overload, and the lack of training in remote learning. So in order to support uh, the teacher communities, uh, we started to develop uh, different kinds of activities like seminars, uh, conference, course, um, uh, I mean, during uh, 2020, um, training teachers, etc. cetera. Um, uh, we, um, our perspective is to use Wikipedia, not only with editions uh, purpose, but to foster critical literacy, uh, to prevent misinformation and to promote collaborative learning because uh, we think that uh, this is a good way to support uh, school communities and also uh, universities communities in this uh, absolutely horrible moment uh, or in this crisis. Uh, so here we have that in April 2021, we uh, developed the online course with the participation of 40 teachers from uh, eight different countries of Latin America. We have uh, teachers from Argentina, Paraguay, Mexico, Bolivia, Peru, Panama, Venezuela, and Chile, of course. Um, so uh, we have uh, a lot of goals that we wanted to develop, but we focused on three main goals. Um, we, uh, the main goal was that teacher uh, can think Wikipedia or consider Wikipedia as an educational tool, which means, first of all, to uh, know what uh, were their concerns with Wikipedia, what were their opinions, uh, how they use Wikipedia, so we made a big work trying to debunk some myths 
that they have about Wikipedia. And then in the second place, we gave them some examples of pedagogical uses. Uh, we share with them different kinds of resources. Uh, we share with them, for example, lesson plans elaborated by Wikimedia Education Program, for example, the Reading Wikipedia in the Classroom Teacher Guide. Uh, uh, actually, uh, that guide was very, very useful for us. Um, and at the end, we encourage them to create their own open educational resources. So uh, we try to design a working methodology um, attending to teacher needs. For example, uh, we have uh, here in Chile that, uh, and I, I think in Latin America in general, that teacher don't have uh, don't have time. They they are uh, very tired of this online or virtual modality, they are very stressed. So we knew that we can't uh, offer a big uh, course with a lot of uh, homeworks and activities. Um, so we designed a short or, or a brief, I don't know, um, training teacher. Uh, it, it was only a month and we mixed uh, mandatory with elective sessions. So for example, on Wednesday, once a week, we uh, uh, meet in uh, by Zoom and we explore it into different contexts related to Wikipedia. But then on Friday, we have those uh, elective sessions that we call between teacher, teachers, sorry, because um, the purpose was was to share with them into a more informal conversation. Uh, uh, so they, they were able to share their experiences, problems, issues, strategies uh, into a more informal context. Uh, we gave them uh, some closer support with their classes. And actually one of the things that teachers uh, liked the most was those uh, elective sessions, the between teachers ones. And also we gave them elective readings and activities. Uh, they, uh, the activities were very flexible. They can adapt. Uh, they were able to adapt them to their own context and subjects. Uh, so here you can see the main sessions. The, uh, this, uh, these are the mandatory sessions. We started by knowing, uh, knowing Wikipedia, case to debunking myth and exploring uses. Uh, the second one was reading Wikipedia in order to prevent misinformation. The third one was researching and contributing on Wikipedia. And at the end, we have uh, this, uh, uh, the last session was creating content on Wikipedia through learning projects. Uh, so for me, the, the main or the, the principal achievement uh, was the elaboration of open educational resources by teachers. Uh, they worked uh, elaborating pedag uh, pedagogical proposals about how to introduce Wikipedia into different subjects. We have uh, literature, uh, hydraulic, digital citizenship, but uh, some teachers uh, decide to uh, write uh, essays where they reflected about different educational issues and about the potential, uh, potential of Wikimedia projects. Um, so here we have the resources. Uh, if you wanted to see them, you can uh, go here, you can click. Uh, here we have the resources. 
for example, uh, this one is a um, pedagogical proposal about how to promote digital citizenship through Wikipedia. Uh, this other uh, is an essay about the importance of emotional skills in education. This other is how to enforce writing skill using Wikipedia. Uh, here we have teaching mechanics through Wikipedia. Uh, so you can click here. Uh, they are in Spanish uh, for the moment, but we are going to work uh, to translate them. Uh, this is how the resources look. Um, here we have like the lesson plans, the argue, the main goals, the, the uh, a general description of the purpose, uh, some steps, uh, resources, evaluation. Uh, they, uh, I think that uh, it's a, a, a great, um, a great uh, creation that teacher made. Um, well, expectations and challenges. We, we want, of course, we want to uh, continue promoting teacher training, but from a collaborative perspective, uh, we want to uh, contrib uh, make a contribution to teacher support. Uh, we want to install Wikipedia as a tool to promote digital literacy. And uh, of course, uh, that teacher be able to create their own open educational resources. So I think that's all. Thank you very much. I don't know if you have a question or something. Thank you. That was. <laughs> I will stop share. Yeah. Okay. Switch. Here. No, that was that was a great presentation, Rocio. Thank you so much. Um, I particularly liked the little graphic of the cat editing Wikipedia. That was uh, <laughs> that, that was really fun. Um, <laughs> does anyone have questions? I guess I can I can uh, start with a question here. So um, you, I I really liked those resources that you had developed in the different uh, subject areas. I know you said you were going to potentially translate some of those. Um, are you planning to develop additional ones too, or do you feel like that's kind of a, a good set for now? Are there more professor or more teachers who are going to create them in other subjects too, or is that kind of where you are for for now yeah uh currently we have uh only uh, eight or seven resources but uh, of course we're going to uh continue with that uh we will develop another course in the second semester uh so yes we wanted to uh uh, improve the resources, uh, make more uh, resources for different kind of subjects. And oh, Joao was asking about Wikidata. And yes, we have a, a project that we are thinking by the moment about how to use Wikidata uh, in schools because uh, we used to develop some activities with uh, high school, with universities, about uh, how to use Wikidata to improve research um, activities. But now we are working uh, into, a, it's a kind of teacher guide about how to use Wikidata at school. So we are uh, very excited about that. And um, I will share. Uh, I will share with you when when we have the the document. I hope in the second semester. Uh, 
I think I can uh, speak for Joao when I encourage you, if you uh, do develop it soon, to submit it to the Wikidata conference. Um, but, yeah. Uh, Joao and the group in Brazil <laughs> are organizing <laughs> right now. Um, I think we are all uh, very eager to see um, good work coming from uh, Wikidata and education and learn a little bit more. Um, Melissa, it looks like you have your hand up. Yes, thank you. Uh, so yeah, it's so nice to hear more in depth about the experience of the online course that you conducted. It's so interesting. And I think that it uh, shares that value with Maxwell's proposal about identifying the problem or an area underdeveloped area uh, of interest of the teachers and you know bringing a proposal there. I'm, I'm curious about what were some of the changes in perspective that you saw in the teachers uh, from the moment you know they joined the online course, maybe with some ideas about uh, Wikipedia and how they they changed those ideas or those ideas evolved uh, throughout the, throughout the course and towards the end. Yes, yes. Uh, well, at, at the beginning. Uh, teachers were a little bit concerned about Wikipedia. Uh, uh, in some cases, they basically uh, didn't allow their students to use Wikipedia because uh, they thought uh, that Wikipedia wasn't like a good uh, or uh, yeah, a, a good source of information. They were a little bit concerned about how, uh, uh, sorry, how you say confiable, how reliable, reliable, yeah, how re uh, reliable Wikipedia was. But then they were very exciting about um, the uh, the way that uh, content were created. They, they were very exciting about uh, how is the community who actually support the Wikipedia project. Uh, then uh, another, uh, I think that another strategy that worked well with us uh, was to show them, for example, the, the document that uh, Wikimedia Spain elaborate. I don't know if you, if you know that uh, kind of guide about uh, how to read Wikipedia uh, and how to improve critical literacy by reading Wikipedia in the classroom. So yeah, at the end of the at the end of the training, teacher they they were very uh, they were very exciting about how their students can improve content in Wikipedia. Um, they were exciting about how their own students uh, could uh, make Wikipedia a better source of information. Thank you, Rocio. Uh, you're, you're talking about the, the catalogo from Wikimedia Spain, right? Yeah. Yeah. OK. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll have the link. I'll share it in the chat. Thank you. Yeah, that, that, that is a great resource, too. Jackie? Yes, just congratulations, Rocio. I was Rocio's student in this uh, course, and I was very happy just listening to the teachers, their impressions, their discussions. And I, I was a really bad student, so I, I didn't um, end, ended up, uh, you know, um, showing up to my with my final paper. But I learned so much because Rocio mentioned uh, all the time uh, interesting bibliography and books. And that was really interesting to me. And also, I think I miss the socialization part, the community part, because I don't have a Facebook account. And I wasn't brave enough to you know, come up with one uh, for this course. And I think that was really important for the cohesion of the, of the group and the sharing. So I miss that, but uh, it was a really, really nice course. Uh, Rocio, congratulations. And learning from, from you and from your experience. Thank you. Thank you. 
a great example of uh, cross country or intra country collaboration there. <laughs> I love it. Any other questions or comments? Okay, well, thank you very much, Rocio and Maxwell, again, for two really great presentations. Um, we will wrap up the meeting now. I will add a general call. We are always looking for uh, presenters. We do these open meetings kind of every two months-ish, uh, two to three months. Um, we may or may not do one in August because Wikimania is there. Uh, but we will probably be picking one up later in the year, um, and we're always looking to highlight the great work. I think you can see from these presentations, it's always wonderful to hear what's going on in uh, different countries around the world. So we would definitely encourage you if you um, know of someone you would like to, uh, to nominate, or if you are interested in speaking yourself, please uh, reach out. I will put my email address here in the chat. Um, please feel free to send me an email and um, I'm happy to, uh, to invite you to participate as well. Or uh, if you know uh, Susanna or Joao or Philip or Zico, um, the other board members, you can reach out to any one of us um, to, to be involved. Okay. With this, I will uh, stop the recording and wrap up the meeting. Um,